This interview is based on the book The Struggle and the Promise Restoring India's Potential by Naushad Forbes and published by HarperCollins India. Naushad Forbes is co-chairman of Forbes Marshall and former CII president. This is a question that uh, Rakesh Mohan um, asked two, three times at conferences that I was at with him. And he kept saying, you know, the 1991 reforms were aimed at industry. Why hasn't industry performed better? Um, and, uh, and, and the answer is, well, industry has performed okay in that the share of manufacturing in GDP stayed at the same level at the time of our highest GDP growth. So manufacturing also grew at roughly the same rate as GDP did, but the share was supposed to go up under both the UPA and the NDA, as you mentioned, it was supposed to go up from fif roughly 15% to 25%. That hasn't happened. It stayed stubbornly at 15%. Um, and as I looked at this more and more, at some point in time, things came together. And for me, my explanation is, look, as many have said, Indian manufacturing is more skill and capital intensive than most countries at our level of wealth, at our level of per capita GDP. We tend to get a higher share of total industrial value added from sectors like chemicals and auto and auto components and so on, and a smaller share from more labor intensive, less technology intensive, less capital intensive sectors like garments and footwear and food processing. So we're more skill and capital intensive than most countries at our level of GDP. If you have a skill and capital intensive industrial structure, the only way in which you can have a really vibrant, growing, prospering, rapidly expanding capital intensive industrial structure is if you invest a lot more in technology. So my answer to that question is that the reason that 15% has not budged is because our investments in in-house R&D from Indian industry have not been what they should be. And there's a whole chapter on that. And, and, and you know, we invest 0.3% of GDP in in-house R&D. The world average is 1.5%. That's what China spends as well. In fact, a little bit more now. And so we need to scale our investments as Indian industry in in-house R&D by a factor of five. Um, it's not a small difference. I mean, it's a factor of five. Um, and you see, you see the gap in various ways. You see the gap in our not being present in certain very technologically vibrant sectors like electronic hardware, uh, electrical machinery, um, IT hardware, um, uh, aerospace, uh, a set of sectors that are the, among the top 10 sectors that attract R&D investments worldwide. Um, we have a presence in three out of the top 10. That's significant, you know, in pharmaceuticals, in auto, a little bit in IT services. Second, even where we invest in R&D, we invest less as a percentage of sales. The most glaring example is IT services. Our top 10 firms invest 1% of sales in R&D. The top 10 firms in China in IT services invest 8%. Um, why the difference? Um, now, you know, when you talk to people, and by the way, the third reason is the, is the reason, if you ask me, if you talk to Indian industry, um, and I've talked a lot about this uh, with them, the general sense is that in Indian industry, we think we're investing enough in R&D. Um, so, so, you know, so, so if you don't know there's a problem, you won't fix it. Um, so, so, uh, so I think, so, so, so my purpose in the chapter is not to depress everyone in Indian industry. It's to, it's to point out that there's a problem and it's something that we need to do. Uh, it's something that we need to address.